So, I had a very bad idea. I'm still working on the Overlord What If, don't worry. That's still going to come out. But I'm trying to make sure it's the perfect uh, intro because then I can just fuck around and find out later in the story. So, yeah. Uh, this is, if you probably, if you've seen the title, you probably know pretty much what this will entail. But this is going to be a dark story. A very, very, very dark story. So if you guys don't like any of the dark topics of abuse, uh, child experimentation, uh, and then some other darker, darker stuff, please click off the video. Because I do not want people to say I didn't warn you, because I definitely did. There's going to be a lot of topics. I'm not going to do any of the uh, raunchy scenes because there are going to be me uh, mentions of, of stuff like rape and uh, raunchy stuff like that. I'm not going to do any of those scenes. Don't worry. But there will be blood, gore, guts, really dark stuff in this story. So if you guys don't like that stuff, please click off the video. But if you do summy like that stuff, please continue uh, with my content. My stuff is normally very action-based and some comedy. But if you do like some of the dark stuff, I do really good dark stories. Um, the Horror Neko. Go look in the playlist column. You'll find it. Uh, it has my... Uh, videos from I think it's episode one to episode seven of it. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed doing that series, but towards the end, I lost all motivation for it and just like I'm done. <laughs> There's pretty much nothing I can do with it anymore. So if you guys like this content, consider subscribing. Like the videos, comments. I try to respond to any comment that, that either asks me a question or will give me feedback on my, any of my videos. If you're just like, next video, next video, I'm probably not going to respond. Sorry, but I'm probably not. So if you guys do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, asking me questions. I'll try to get to as many questions as possible while I'm either doing my normal job, which I'm a dough roller at a pizza place, so don't worry. I try to get to you guys as fast as possible. Or I'm recording. So, if I don't get to your comment, it's because I never saw it. No notifications, no nothing. Never saw it. Sorry about that. So let's get started into the video. We start at the third round of the tuning exams. We currently have Hayate Gecko, Neji Hyuga, and Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto is not wearing the orange jumpsuit. No, what Naruto is wearing is apparently no shirt and just a pair of shorts. That's going to change real soon. Because Naruto walks right into the middle of thing, sits down, cross-legged, cross-armed, and goes, I got a few secrets to tell the world. And just to make sure nobody moves, nobody tries to stop me, nobody does anything, he claps his hand together and says, Mokuton, Revenge of the Dense Woodlands. Trees start sprouting up on everybody who would move, who will move, and who has bad intentions towards anybody. The only ones who aren't restrained that heavily are the civilians. They just have a vine wrapping around them to make sure they stay in their seat. Not an actual tree, 
locking them down. So all the ninjas, everybody who isn't uh, harmless gets strapped down. And he goes, except for Neji and Hayate, they're they're uh, pulled down by a, a vine. And he goes, don't worry, I'll remove it right when I'm done with my comments. First comment. I'm actually female. Drops the uh, uh, henge that he's been wearing for pretty much his entire life. Ever since he was five. Well, technically six, because that's when he came back to the village and learned how to use henge. But ever since he was six, he's been wearing a male henge. So now he is wearing sports bra. Well, technically not sports bra. Or like piece of cloth I'll tell you why later but trench coat short shorts and sandals has a giant sword on her back that looks like that made out of scales like shark scales if you if you know what I'm talking about then good on you that looks like that. And she goes, I got a few more topics to talk about. One topic is, she looks directly at the civilians. You're a fucking dumbass group that doesn't know the difference between a scroll and the kunai that's sealed into it. And everybody, just, everybody who doesn't know the secret is just staring at her like, what? Everybody who is like, oh, sh she's saying it. She's saying it. She goes, for those who don't know, I am the Jinchuriki, or also known as the scroll of the QB no Kitsun. And the kunai, the QB. And if you know anything about sealing, which hopefully some of the ninjas here do, and will explain to those who are a little confused about the scroll and kunai, a uh, represent representation I a example is the damn fox is safe and locked up in a freaking seal. It's in its jail cell. Well, technically not anymore since Orochimaru stole me a few years ago, which I'll get into later, but it was in its jail cell perfectly fine. So the five years of torture you put me through is not fair. And then I came back from Orochi Pito and yeah, I, I couldn't be caught by civilians. So <laughs> let's get into their charges. Civilian, the civilians and the civilian council, which are not being held down by vines, but being held down by actual trees, are wanted for inhibiting a clan heir and a he what's the word? I don't remember the word, but a soon to be shinobi. And all the civilians are like, what? And she goes, Oh yeah, I also forgot that. Uh my name is Naruto or Naruko Naruko Uzumaki Namakaze. And she just continues on talking like hey, it's no big deal. The Sand Dame currently has crap over his mouth, so he can't speak. Orochimaru, who, yes, is in the spot of the, the uh, uh, Kazekage, is like, well, shit. She did survive. Ah, uh, scheisse. Shit, in German. Uh, so, she continues ranting on what they've done, all the way from... Raping her to just completely ignoring her. Yeah, that's how wide the spectrum is. And she goes, When I hit five, I was sent to the hospital on my birthday. October 10th, the QB Festival, as you guys like to call it. 
But I call it the fox hunt because you guys try to hunt me down on like some, some kind of demon. Which I was not, by the way. Wasn't. Was not. I was not. Now I am because of your dumbasses. And while she's telling this story, he ears appear on her head and a fox tail appears behind her. And she keeps going, being like, I was in the hospital and Kabuto Yukushi, the nurse that was helping me, and yes, he was a nurse at the time to get experience being a nurse so he can become a combat medic, which thankfully he was not very mean. He was actually very, very nice and pleasant to be around until he took me to Orochi Pedo. And the snake face, who appears right in front of, of the Kaze Kage and rips off his face, be like, snake face right here. And he starts struggling, be like, let me kill him. A vine wraps around her mouth to keep her quiet for right now. And she goes, snake face right here. Started pricking me with needles. And I became so much stronger. She takes out a kunai and is currently twirling it in her hand. And goes, he gave me, uh, what was it again? 10? No, 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 no. That's way too low. 15. No, no, let me rephrase that. I tried to escape as a little boy who th you would have thought Ki you killed. So you tried putting a male bloodline into me, which completely f my genetics, by the way, thank you about that, and turned me into something that shouldn't be real, but is, and I'll get into that later, with medical professionals. So, thank you for that. Uh, and she's still spinning the kunai. I think it was 25? No, 26 bloodlines you tried to put into me. And thanks, thank God the fox was around. He saved those bloodlines into his memory. Still twirling the kunai. And it's getting faster and faster on her finger. So now it barely even registers to the naked eye of Sarutobi Hiruzen. One of the strongest and best shinobi in the entire stadium. It barely registers for him. Nobody else can see. Nobody can see the kunai anymore except for the ring. And she goes, I think number one bloodline that I enjoy the most is probably the immortality that he gave me from Hedon the S rank Nuknin who is wanted for slaying the entirety of the what was it oh yeah tourist village that used to be a ninja village so uh Watch what he did to me. And flings the kunai right through her head. And she just continues talking. See? He gave me immortality. I didn't want it. I didn't need it. But he gave it to me. He gave me Mokuton. He gave me a paper release. He gave me five. He gave me a scorch release. Uh, what was the last one? That was the elemental? Oh no. No, no, no. You didn't just give me elemental ones. You also gave me this. Pulls the sword off her back that looks like, like scales. And she goes, if anybody remembers the Hoshigaki clan and their ability to use a sword, it has a personality. And she picks it up and slams it right in front of uh, <laughs> Orochimaru and goes, Oh, don't worry. I'm just going to let this rest right here. We'll let the sword rest on his leg. And you'll understand why later. So she keeps going. Hiruzen is pale at this point. Because 
the wound on her head is still slowly closing. So there's blood going on her right side and her left side. The kunai is right next to his head. Completely covered in blood. All the Anbu are currently locked down by the trees, by the way. So she keeps going. Uh, I have so many bloodlines. She accidentally bites herself in the hand. Ow. She starts wringing out her hand. And, and everybody sees the hands on her hand. And she goes, oh, yeah. I explosion, explosive clay really. He's from uh, Iowa. I wanted none of these bloodlines. I didn't need any of these bloodlines. I already had uh, puts chakra in her stomach to show the, the seal. I already had a chakra battery in me. And what I didn't know was so good for you guys, but also so bad for you guys, is I'm the last Shuriki of the Nine Tails. Once I die, it's gone. Cannot be taken out, thanks to the Reaper, or the Death God, or the Shinigami, whatever you want to call him. Can't be taken out. So, guess what? No more nine. And there's some spies for the Akatsuki in the, the thing, and they're like, shit. And my fa my favorite part about this is there's a blonde haired female with a pink or per pink pinkish purple diamond on her forehead in the stands, not held down whatsoever, but with a sign in front of her that says "Just wait, it gets better." She's currently bawling her eyes out because. Out of flashback, out of the blue, she's in her hotel room getting ready to run from the creditor, from the um, debt collectors, and a courier appears, being like, uh, "Are are you Tsunade Senju?" And she goes, "Yes, that is me." He goes, "I I have a package for you, and it's just a small package." And. She takes the package, opens it up, and sees a picket picture. A small picture in a picture frame of Kushina, Minato, and the pregnancy that Kushina had. And on the picture, on the frame itself, it says, I never died. Get your ass back here for the tuning exams. You'll want to see this. And she can't recognize the handwriting. So she immediately got in touch with her teammate. Which was surprisingly in the same town. Not so surprisingly. He's stalking her. But surprisingly in the same town for her. And she asked. Quick question. Is my godchild dead? And she's just glaring at him. And he starts freaking out, being like, how the hell did she figure it out? How the hell did she figure it out? And he goes, no, your godchild is not dead. And she goes, why wasn't I told? He goes, I don't know. Completely lying through his teeth. Because he suggested to Sarutobi, why don't we not tell Tsunade? Because she'll be just taken out of the village. And we need that power currently. So Tsunade walks right up to him and says, If I find out you're lying that you didn't know why, you're really losing it. And then walks away. He immediately sends a message to Sarutobi with his toad saying, Somehow someone told Tsunade... Her goddaughter's still alive. And Sarutobi is freaking out and trying to uh, help with the aftermath and trying to keep Naruko away from um, Tsunade. And the day before, 
the tuning exam. Tsunade's in her hotel room. And another package appears on her bed. Completely out of the blue. She just got out of the shower. A package appears on the bed. It's a manila envelope. And this package says, For Tsunade Senju and Shizun Kato. Can't forget Tauntaun. And she goes, uh, huh? So she's really skeptical. So she uses all of her, her ninja abilities to find out what's in here. And it's just two pieces of paper. And she yells, Shizun, get your ass in here. Shizun walks into the room and be like, what's wrong? And she goes, we got a package. There's nothing. It's not booby trapped. It's nothing. So she opens it finally with Shizun in the room. And it shows two tickets to the tuning exams. Front row seats. Two. She goes, we got tickets. I was planning on going out later today and get them, but we got tickets. And she's in like, okay. And then another thing just falls from the roof and it lands on the bed saying, if you don't come, I'm not paying for your debts. And Sonata's like, uh, we're going no matter what, right? And Shizun looks at the paper and starts laughing maniacally, being like, totally, we're going. And Sonata's like, you're, you're going to let me gamble a few days. Aren't, aren't you? She goes, maybe. Shizun is very sadistic when it comes to money. I, I'm making her that way. Don't worry. It's going to be funny. So we go back to the day of the tuning exams. Present time. <laughs> She's still going on. Tsunade is bawling her eyes out. And during this entire time, Hiruzen is finding out so many things that he did not know. So he's just super surprised. Orochimaru is trying to get out of the wood. Nobody's moving. Tsunade's too distraught to move. Jiraiya is currently pinned down. He can't summon toads. Because apparently a fox went to the toads and says, On this day, do not let anybody summon you. And they ask why. And he pulled out this entirety of what Jiraiya has done to break a code of the toads. Which is never leave your family behind. I can leave your comrades behind. And if they self-sacrificing. But never leave family behind. And it leaves so much information. And I'm like, okay, we can do that. We're actually going to break the contract. And he goes, do that the day after. And I go, you know, that's a good idea. So they stopped him from summoning. With a seal on his name and the scroll, so he can't summon. <sighs> she keeps going on. And she goes, okay, now that all that's sorted out, it's time to get on to the masterminds of this whole ordeal. Of why I'm doing this, so I can be... Well, semi-decently treated. <laughs> even though I'm now technically a monster. Because if I get in touch with any bloodline now, I technically copy it, so... Uh, oh well. Everybody's looking at her like she's a piece of meat now. Instead of a human. She goes, Oh yeah, um... I think I can safely say I have the protection of the Inazuka, Nara, Akimichi, Yamanaka, Senju. I think I got his signature down. Sarutobi. And if I remember correctly, the Fire Daimyo. Because my mother and father were friends with the Fire Daimyo. 
She looks right at the fire diamonds box and I'm like, uh, aren't you supposed to be my godfather? Or is it that pervert that's currently across the, the city? And none of the ninja guardians were trapped. None of them. The fire daimyo was encased in protective field. And the entire place was protect, protected. And it had a sign in there that says, don't worry. Wood is just for your protection. Something's happening later. And you'll want to see it. And the ninja guardians could go up to the go out into the hallway and walk out into where they can see the place, but they can't go any further. And it says on the note, if ninja guardians go into anywhere or during the seating or stadium, they will be trapped by roots. And he advised them not to go past that. And a ninja guardian walks out into the where they could see him, but still not leaving the tunnel. He yells, yes, the fire daimyo is the godfather of Naruko Namikaze Uzumaki. And she just smiles me like, fatso. So I was right. Jiraiya of the Sanin is my biological grandfather. And she just looks at Tsunade and goes, I think I figured out who my grandmother is. And they all look at her and she goes, I'll talk about that later with, with my godmother. So it's now time to figure out why I'm still technically a ninja and why I'm not being killed for treason or trying to take my own life for treason, which would technically not work because I'm technically immortal. But let's go on. A. Donzo Shimura. A puppet master wanted for multiple accounts of treason again and Sarutobi, but never had enough evidence. Pulls out a stack of papers, put it on Sarutobi's lap. There's your evidence. He'll die today. Oh, and the shotting gun on his right arm and the fake right arm that he technically has is not fake. It's Hashirama cells, which I'll gladly extract and throw into a furnace. And that right eye of Kodo Matsukami from Shisui Uchiha will also be extracted and thrown into a furnace. Koharu Yudate and Homura Mitakado. You two are wanted for treason and backstabbing of the Sandame Hokage. And illegal uh illegal usage of your power. Your power is for wartime only. Technically, we are about to be in wartime in a few minutes, but that is besides the point. But after the QB was subdued, your power stopped. And don't give me that bull crap about uh, there was no Hokage. There was a Hokage. If the current Hokage is out of commission or dead, it immediately goes to the previous Hokage who can do the job. So you illegally put laws into effect that limited what I could do, which was a big no-no for a clan heir and the next daimyo of Whirlpool Country. Oh, I forgot about that. Whirlpool, they're the daimyos of their own country and leaders of their own ninja village. So technically, I'm the latest Yuzuki and latest daimyo of Whirlpool Country. So, uh, I have a lot of power. And then they just hear uh, <laughs> a foreigner be like, but Yuzu is destroyed. She goes, <laughs> no, it's not. Yuzu doesn't die. With the place. Yuzu dies with its people. As long as there's one Uzumaki. I still have access to all their accounts. All their land. Everything. You want to know how much land the Uzumaki owns. In the elemental nations. Like just the island. You know, she starts laughing. Uproariously. She goes no. 
the Uzumaki clan owns 90% of every ninja village. Except for the newer ones that uh, became in ninja villages after it was destroyed. They are currently all owned by the Uzumaki clan. And everybody has been owing taxes to the Uzumaki clan since my mother took it over when Uzu fell. Here's the most important thing. That's quite a sum of money. So, want to know how I know all this crap? Pulls out a ceiling scroll, opens it up, puts it on the ground, unseals one seal, and it's just this giant tower of papers. And she goes, this is a legally binding contract for the latest daimyo of the Whirlpool country, which is technically me. And since I am an adult when I put on the Hittite, I am technically the daimyo. I have power over everything that goes on in these lands. And she pulls out a specific one and goes, this is for the loan of the land to the daimyo. Since the daimyo didn't have enough land for the estimated growth of the village. Shows it right in front of the Hiruzen. And Hiruzen pales a little. And she goes, don't worry, it's not done. She goes and grabs another paper out of the middle of the stack. Being like, ah, here it is. The blood oath of the Huga clan. My favorite one. The Huga clan had purchased and with a blood oath said they would never tamper with the seal. The Dojutsu protection seal. From an old Uzumaki named Yamamoto. Yes. I ain't going to say his full name, but it's Yamamoto Uzumaki something or other. I I can't say it. Never will. But, and she points at the paper. Hiruzen, do you see the signature of Hiza, Hiyashi and Hizashi's great-grandfather? And he nods his head. Do you see the signature of Hizashi and Hiyashi's father? And he nods his head. Like, Two separate generations. Two separate generations. Agreed. To never adjust the cage. Well, into the cage bird seal. Guess what we have now? The cage bird seal. So she appears right in front of Neji. Like, give me your Hittite. You're going to get it back, but give me it. He is completely confused. So he just takes off his Hittite. She immediately pulls out a, a thing and says... Put this on the back of your neck. This is the Dojutsu Protection Seal. And he looks at it and it has nothing to do with the Cage Bird Seal. And she goes, here, here, and here are the Dojutsu Protection Clauses. If you want, you can flood your eyes with Chakra and it immediately he turns them into useless. It is a last dish effort for when people do take you alive and so on. Here, here, and here are all the on death, destroy the dojutsu kind of stuff. There's nothing else. Do you see that? And he goes, yeah, I see no other thing. So he turns it around. There's nothing. She goes, make sure that ink goes down on your neck. So he lifts up his hair, puts ink the ink down on his neck. And she's like, okay, I'm going to turn it on. It may sting a bit. So she turns it on. He winces at it. And she pulls off the paper and shows the paper completely clean. And she goes, I'm going to show you an Uzumaki trick. And she puts it on his forehead and does a few hand-sized Uzumaki ceiling transfer. Cursed seal transfer. And rips off the paper. And he feels a slight tug in his mind and it's completely gone. And he winced at the tug because it was a little bit painful. And she goes... You, my good sir, are now free of the cage bird seal. And I'll be going to every single branch Hayuga and main house Hayuga and giving them the dojo, dojutsu protection seal, which goes on the back of the neck, which we suggested to them and said, since your hair is long enough, that will help. And for the children who have it placed on them, 
and still don't have long enough hair, wear some kind of scarf. And if you still don't want to do that and want to change where your Hittite is, you put it around your neck. So it completely hides your neck. There you go. That helps everything. And everybody's like, what What the hell is going on here? So. We go to. Ten minutes of her reading off crimes of civilians. And she goes, oh, my favorite civilian. Mibuki Haruno. And her husband. Still don't know your name because I don't give it crap. He's perfectly fine. But Mibuki. Mibuki, Mibuki, Mibuki. And she just starts shaking in her chair. And she goes, you started, what was it? My fifth birthday mob? No, 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 no. My first Second, third, fourth, and fifth birthday mob. And she's just like, what? She goes, don't worry. The only reason why I know that is because of him. Points at her stomach. The seal's still there. It never disappeared. It's because of him. He's the reason why I know all the crap I do. He taught me law. He taught me politics. All this. While I was in the clutches of the snake pedo up there. So it's time for me to tell your judgment. For the abuse of a child. That's like 5, 10, maybe even 20 years. Depending on who's prosecuting you. Abuse of a clan heir. Unlawful and unneeded attacks on a clan heir. Oh, my favorite one, my favorite one is the laws against hurting the village Shinchiriki. And she looks at everybody and goes, do you guys know why Sarutobi Hiruzen was willing to give out my Shinchiriki status? They all just look confused at each other and she goes, because there was laws protecting the village Jinjitagi. Thanks to the Shodaim Hokage and the Nidaim Hokage. And a few thanks to the Sandaim Hokage. The Shodaim says, No harm shall come to the village Jinjitagi. The village Jinjitagi may be classified as a weapon during wartime, but if needed, can be classified as a military weapon for their own protection. My favorite one is by the Nidaim Hokage. Village Shinchirikis are never to be underfed, are never to be hurt outside of the battlefield, and never to be misused by the higher-ups of the council. Only the Hokage can order the village Shinchiriki to do higher than C-rank missions. And my favorite one, thank the Lord, the third Hokage, found this out. The healing properties of the village Shinshiriki. He says the village Shinshiriki can never be put into the CRA unless they are willing to go themselves. So, I have been placed under the CRA via Donzo. He stamped the paper right when I said my name. So, that's one law broken. You guys don't have to worry about that. That's another crime Donzo has. Don't worry, his arm's already taken off and his eyes already plucked out. You guys broke the harming the village Shinchiriki outside of a battlefield. You guys broke the defeating the village Shinchiriki outside of the battlefield. Everything that you've done was outside of a battlefield and completely illegal. So, yeah. All the shop owners have forfeited their land and their, their uh, business licenses to run their business. Sorry about that. 
all your properties and all your crap goes back to me. And that goes for every store that kicked me out or sold me rotten food. 90% of the stores are like, oh, crap. Uh, we're screwed. And she keeps going on another 10 minutes. And this, it's now currently roughly, it started at 8. It's currently roughly 8.45. We're doing this. And she goes, I'm starting to get tired of talking. I'm going to summon my best friend and my companion for the foreseeable future, which will never change because I'm immortal. She runs through hand seals, summoning jutsu. Kubi no Kitsun. One-tailed form. And he appears right underneath her, and she's laying on top of him being like, I'm tired. Can you continue? He's like, God damn it. Fine. So he pulls out of nowhere a pair of glasses, puts it on his face. He goes, and he's just, he notices that everybody's just questioningly looking at him. He goes, just because I'm a mountain-sized fox that is freaking immortal does not mean I have bad eyesight. Does not mean that I don't have bad eyesight. He hears snickering over him, over top of him. His tail immediately slaps her, being like, you too, shut up. And she pulls out a paper for him. And he starts reading. Another 15... Currently, Neji's like, what the fuck is going on? Hayate's like, huh. No wonder you got told me to treat her nice. Oh, well. I was going to do it anyway, because I see her as a hero, but... I'm kind of freaked out because the fox is out, but... It's one tail. I bet if we all teamed up in the stadium, we could probably stop it but meh let's keep going let's see how good let's see how she he, she handles everything else so he goes on a tangent of what else has been done to her that's wrong that's wrong another 30 minutes so it's not i mean 15 and Sasuke Uchiha and Kakashi Hatake appear. And she goes, So Kakashi, how's your clone? And he goes, He signals it for it to pop. It pops and he goes, Huh. I'm going to go to the stands and sit patiently for my verdict. Goodbye. Appears in the stands right next to Anko, Kerr and I, and everything. And they all look at him like, what's your verdict? He, she, he goes, just wait. It's going to get better. And Sasuke's like, what? She goes, get to the fighter's box. It's not done. He's completely confused. And she goes, okay. Now on to the clan heirs. Ino Yamanaka. Harassment. A fine of, uh, I don't know, a thousand bucks. Shikamaru Nara. Nothing. Didn't do anything bad, to me at least. He's just lazy and freaking troublesome. Choji Akamichi. Great friend. Nothing bad to say about him. Shino Aburame. My best friend. Don't know how to badmouth him. Uh, she immediately looks at him and goes, I did find a new kind of bug in the forest of death. I'll take you to it later. Uh, and he just starts being giddy. And she goes, okay. Now for their clans. The Yamanaka clan. Due to the laws and the restrictions in place. And all the crap you've tried. You are being refunded. And you are being given the land your current clan is holding. Via the Uzumaki clan. Looks at the Aburame clan. You are being, give, being given all the clan grounds you own and another three acres behind your clan grounds because I have noticed that your hive has grown a little bit too big for the limited space you have. And the entire Aburame clan is like, yes, 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 yes. 
And this stadium is twice as big because she ordered it in the shadow to be bigger. Don't worry. She looks at the Inazuka clan going, The only thing I have to do with you is <sighs> please insulate the frickin' kennels during mating season. Ever since I got back, it's been really weird walking by the Inazuka clan during mating season. I've been able to smell everything. Absolutely everything. And she looks directly at Hana and Tsum being like, especially you two. And goes on to the Akamichi clan. The Akamichi clan. Due to me not being well-versed in food and all that stuff, I am giving you access to all of the food production, food production, so you can keep the quality of food as high as possible for the entirety of the Fire Nation. And the Akamichi clan are like, what? And she goes, oh, don't worry, don't worry. I'm also leaving a few techniques to help the Double your working speed. So don't worry. Looks at the Nara clan. Be like. The Nara clan. You are a really troublesome clan. And everybody just starts snickering. And she goes. For the men. Giving you hiding seals. For the women. I'm giving you a frying pan. That if you hold. Will always find you her uh, husband. But it's for emergencies only. If they've done something really troublesome, that's when you start whacking them with that frying pan. Don't worry, it's extra durable, so it can't bend. All the men just start shaking in fear. Or Shikamaru raises his hand, and be like, I got a question. She goes, No, it cannot find you. But no, until you get a wife, you cannot have the hiding seal. He goes, Damn. And she looks directly at Tamari. Don't worry. I'll give you the frying pan and I'll give him the hiding seal once you get married. And Tamari's face goes completely beat red. Be like, what? And Shikamaru's like, ah, uh, what? And she goes, ah, oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll tell you guys later. And both Yoshino and Shikaku are currently in the stands, not held down because some people aren't held down because they know that. Oh, what's going to happen isn't going to be that uh, uh, bad for them. Start snickering. And she turns to the rest of her group of clan heirs. She looks directly at Kiba being like, you're a freaking horn dog. You've harassed my friend multiple times. You have sexually harassed asked me multiple times. He goes, when? She goes, well, I'm trying to buy food. You've seen me at the grocery store multiple times, trying to get food, good food. Don't worry. I'll beat your ass later. She looks at... Uh, <laughs> she looks at uh, Hinata and goes, don't worry, I already put the uh, dojutsu protection seal on you. I already told you how it works, so don't worry. Hinata starts nodding. And we go. The duck butt adventure, adventure himself. Sasuke Uchiha. She looks directly at Sasuke and goes, You're the last remaining Uchiha. And since I'm the last remaining Uzumaki that we know of, all the crimes that the Uchiha has committed against me Falls on you. And he just looks at her like, what crimes? She goes, uh, what was it again? Oh, yeah. Clan's been raping me. Uh, clan's been beating me. Oh, yeah. And unlawful imprisonment of me when I did nothing. So that's uh, maybe 20, 30 years. In prison. Oh, and don't forget the multiple fines of breaking and entering of my house towards your clan. So that's another 
million dollars. And everybody's just paling at what she's gone through. And she goes, oh, don't worry. It gets even better. She looks directly at Kakashi and goes, Kakashi. I have a quick question before I get into any of this, because I can't access your files without breaking laws. He nods and understands, and she goes, On the date of October 10th, I think it's seven, yeah, seven years ago, seven-ish years ago, were you out on a mission? Ibuki raises his hand and goes, I can answer that for him. Yes, he was. He goes, she goes, okay. You weren't slacking. So who was the Ambu who was supposed to protect me that day? Because my first birthday, I was protected by Kakashi. Second birthday, I was protected by Yugao. My third birthday, I was protected by a snake, which I know you're out there, snake, and I know who you are, but I won't tell you because Tell them because then they're just going to hate you too. And Yuga and Kakashi have enough following in the Jonin Ambu circles to completely nullify any rumor. But you, you don't. Sadly, you don't. Even though you're one of the nicest people in this entire goddamn village. And Anko who was just barely Ambu at that time, just starts beat red blushing. And she goes, oh, my favorite one. My fourth birthday. It was both Weasel and Raven. I remember their eyes like it's, what? Just yesterday it happened? Both eyes were red. Crimson blood red. Raven, I know you're out there. I know you weren't a new Chiha. I know you're using a genjutsu of your eyes, so I don't know if it's your real eye color or not, but you had a beautiful eyes back then. You still do now, because I know who you are. So I do know if it's your regular or not, but I'm not going to tell. And she just keeps going on a tangent of all the Ambu members who've helped her, and she goes, okay, now here's the part that will become controversial. The Ambu members who saw what was happening and didn't do crap. I don't know if you're part of Donzo's little root program at that point in time. I don't know uh, if you were not on duty at that point in time. But you're still being fined for being a bystander. Because you didn't do your freaking job. And all those Ambu members are sweating, being like, how much? She goes, don't worry. Uh, 30000 would be fine. Sar Toby's gag is now off, and he's just still slack-jawed. And she goes, okay. Now that that's through, I'm only going to be using either Taijutsu or Kenjutsu. And she appears right in front of Orochimaru and picks up her sword, being like, Oh, so much chakra. It's delicious. And appears back down in front of the QB. He goes, okay, you need to go back into your cage. She kicks the sword because it was a uh, blade up. Now the blade's down. She's holding it correctly. To the side. And he goes, fine. I like stretching my legs though. You were sitting down and reading. How is that stretching your legs? He goes, Fair. And just poofs out of existence. So she looks at Neji and goes, you got two options. Kenjutsu or Taijutsu? Which one do you want me to use? He goes, I'm not going to win anyway, either way. So I say Taijutsu. See what your style is. She goes, (laughs) it's not any normal style. No, 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 no. You want to know what it's called? Guy and Lee are in the background. Just be like, what is it called? What is it called? What is it called? 
Neji goes, I'm going to be hounded later because I didn't ask you. And she goes, oh, yeah. Um, at six foot, uh, not that six foot. What was it? I think 10 foot pull up your ass was caused by the cage bird seal. It's to help make you think you're weaker than you actually are and help to mess with your mind. So I, I kind of also negated that. So yeah, uh, that's also gone. So now you're a lot nicer. And he goes, huh, I am. Anyway, what is it called? She goes, my style of fighting is called the bone fist. And they go, and he goes, why is it called the bone fist? And she goes, because you break bones in your own fist if you use it without practice first. And he goes, how much practice do you need? She goes, <laughs> A, you either need to be immortal or B, you need to have a, a, a bead you sealed inside you so you can heal from the damage because you need to practice it every single day, breaking all your bones every single day for seven years straight. The only reason why I didn't use it at the academy is because I wasn't allowed to use it at the academy. The academy requires all students to use a linear style while the bone fist which is not linear. It's wide sweeping and more. I'm going to beat you into the ground before you even notice what kind of style it is. Kind of style. And he goes, quick question. And she goes, hmm? He goes, did you use Shunshin or kind of, some kind of movement technique besides just pure speed to get up to the balcony? She goes, no, don't worry. I put my seals back on so you can have a fair fight and show your true talents. And she goes, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> use your fire style. Don't use the earth style, Jukin. And he goes, how do you know about that? She goes, the same way I know that Hinata has a complete style of water, thanks to you. Oh, and Hinabi has a complete style of wind. He just narrows his eyes and goes, how did you figure that out? She goes, <laughs> you think the shadow clone is just a normal clone? Ha! I learned it while I was in Orochimaru's base. I didn't learn it when I got out the scroll of seals. No, I learned this one. And the clone appears in the middle of the uh, civilian area and goes, Oh, don't worry. This is a low-level one. Boom! Yeah. The 10-meter radius around those civilians, which I'll explain. Um, I don't need to explain it. They're corrupt. They're undermining the entire uh, village. They're all dead. <clears throat> she goes, don't worry. They're corrupt. They're, uh, they're treasonous. They, they require the death penalty anyway. Oh, and she looks at Sarto and be like, before we start this match fully, um, you got a lot of paperwork in your office. Don't worry, your office is currently sealed with a blood seal that only you can open and I can open. So, yeah. And Neji activates his Byakugan and immediately vomits to his side. And she looks at him confused and he goes, are those all the scars? She looks at herself and goes, huh, I never took that Jinjutsu off. She rolls up her arm, pulls off a, a paper tag and rolls down on her sleeve and goes, no, that's not all of them. I've healed all those the, from the f uh, first, I think, four years. But then once Orochi Pita got me, all the star scars became permanent. So this is just year five of my life. Well, technically year six too, but meh. You see faded scars, burn scars on the left side of her face. 
a giant jagged scar across her eyes. Her eyes are completely white, by the way. It's not the Byakugan. Don't worry. And he looks at her and goes, you have absolutely no chakra going to your eyes. She goes, oh yeah, I'm blind. But thanks to a certain bloodline that Orochi Pito gave me, I'm technically not blind. I could read, write, I can do anything because she points at a corner and a clone is currently holding with its eyes closed, currently holding up a palm with an eyeball in it. Another clone is doing the same. Another clone, another clone. Be like, I can change my hand mouths into eyeballs. And right above the mouths, an eyeball opens and the mouth shuts underneath it. Like, yeah, I'm freaking weird. <laughs> I can only use one at a time, though, so. Get over here, almighty pool. I don't remember what the uh, English version of uh, Shin uh, Bancho Tenin is. So I'm just going to call it Almighty Pull and Almighty Push when I say it in English. So he slides forward and she goes, that's a good enough uh, distance for you to get a head start. She goes, don't worry. Takes a few hits for me to warm up. Currently, and crack, crack, crack. Like she's currently twisting her body back and forth. Stiff and hasn't used, haven't used it for the last two days. So, get ready. Because once you start hitting me, I'm going to start hitting, hitting back. So, Neji rushes her. And immediately starts pounding on her. With his fire style gentle fist. Which leaves scorch marks where the Tenketsu are. And he's curious because Tanketsu, the Tenketsu aren't uh, taking any damage like they normally do. So she starts punching back and she isn't holding back her strength. All you hear when she hits his head is crack and she hits his gut. You hear two cracks at the same time. And every time Neji gets punched, you hear a wince from the crowd. So Neji's now on the ground, folded like a freaking pretzel. Not not literally, but it looks like he can be folded like a pretzel. She goes, don't worry, we got a world-class medic in the stands. Oh, Granny, get down here. They just feel me killing intent washer of the stadium. Like, I'm not that old! She goes, you're older than me, get down here. Shizun, who was right next to her, starts snickering. And she steps down, being like, I'm not that freaking old. So <laughs> she walks up to Neji and stops the internal blading, stops all the uh, uh, dangerous stuff, and starts setting the bones back in the place. All you hear is crack, crack, crack from each time she sets them back into place. Not pops. No, that's when it's dislocated. Crack. So they're all set back into place and he goes, I just want to go home now. And she goes, and Tsunami goes, you can't go home for a good week or two. You got to make sure all these start to heal correctly. And once you get home, you can't be out of bed for another good three weeks. And Hinata appears right next to him and just gives an evil grin and be like, I get to take care of you. And he just starts shaking like, please leave me in the hospital. Please leave me in the hospital. You'll understand that later. It's very important to the story. For no freaking reason. It's just very funny for the story. So I'm going to end it here. Hopefully you guys will enjoy. Because I'm going to record the second part later today. Hopefully later today. Maybe tomorrow. But I'm definitely recording the second part. Either today or tomorrow. So I can get this out to you guys. This one will be out today. The day I'm recording it. And then the next one will be out next week. 
either Wednesday or Thursday. Preferably Wednesday, maybe Thursday. Latest will be out Friday of next week. So don't worry. These are getting recorded. It's two shot. Nothing else will be recorded until that's done. But I'm still trying to get the over Overlord What If done. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Talk to you guys later. Bye.